Blessings and welcome to your program, Jeremiah 2911, with your host, Reverend Dexter Pelzer, and myself, Dr. Marisol Pelzer. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. And today we have a unique program. Hmm. It's about the truth or tickling ears. Do you rather somebody tell you the truth or somebody tell you something that is to please your ears, but it's not the truth. For example, when you go to the doctor, do you want to tell the doctor to tell you that you're sick? Or do you, if you are truly sick, or do you want him to tell you that you're okay so you don't have to worry? I'd rather hear the truth. So the same thing with the Word of God. The truth versus tickling ears. And unfortunately, we are in a season and in perilous times where people are not being told the truth. And we need to hear the truth because the truth is what preserves us in the Lord and the truth is what saves us and how we will save our salvation with trembling and fear, Dexter. Amen. Amen. So before we start the program, I'm going to ask you to pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you and you're so awesome yes. in your love. You're so awesome yes, Lord. in everything you've done for us through the cross, Jesus. Thank you for obedient to the point of death. Thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through you, Jesus. Because today we're speaking of the truth. And so, Father, even today, uncover our eyes, our ears, and our hearts, and our minds, and our souls, and spirits. Uncover any falseness in our minds, yes. or our mindsets, or our beliefs. Yes. Uncover them. We crucify Jesus him in the name of Jesus. We accept only your truth, Lord. Yes, Father. And by your truth, he has to be set free of any lies yes. and deceits or even beliefs that we have that are not of you. We choose to walk in your truth and your truth alone. We ask you to anoint us and anoint everyone who hears, Holy Spirit, with the truth, because you are the in spirit Jesus of truth. Name. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You know, it, it's such contrasts in life, but... In reality, my flesh, and the Spirit just follow me, only wants to be flattered. I want pride. I want people to honor me. I want everyone to see me as perfect. Right? And what if I'm in ministry? Oh, my goodness. Now you just elevate that a hundred times. Goodness gracious, if anyone saw that I sinned or had issues or areas that I was working on, because then I wouldn't be... I mean, people would look at me and say, oh, you're not equipped for ministry. You have sin in your life or you're dealing with things. No. So the devil actually lies to us and tells us that we all have to appear perfect. So we put on this facade with each other of perfect love in the church. Everything's great. Everything's wonderful. And then when people go home, everything falls apart. And the reality is we're to walk in the truth at all times and all places. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit can be released to set us free from those things that we think we need to hide from each other, and even from God, let's be honest. So the devil, let's just really be clear here, he wants us to have sin in our life, to hide that sin and continue in that sin and be destroyed. And then what he gathers around us is people that will tell us we're doing great, we're wonderful, you're so anointed, you're this, you're that, just, con and, you know, the inherent message is God's grace covers you. Just continue in your sin. You're wonderful. You're awesome. And the reality is that's not what the word ever said and what it ever will say when we read the truth. Because the truth of the word of God is that we are to be made holy and perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. Without holiness, we will not see the Lord. We are to be transformed into the very image of Jesus Christ from glory to glory. We are not to stay in our sins. We are not to continue loving our sins. We are to be set free by the finished work of the cross and the power of the resurrection, as we will see. So the devil wants to always have us read the word to confirm that we're doing good, not to change us. He'd rather take us to the scriptures and make us feel good. And he instead... What the Holy Spirit wants to do is use the word, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God, as living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing the division of our soul and spirit, judging the thoughts of intentions of our hearts, sanctify us, bringing us to repentance, and radically setting us free and changing us to be like Jesus Christ. 
It is a powerful difference. I can read the word to establish what I believe, or I can believe, read the word to tickle my ears and say I'm doing great. Just read those scriptures and make me feel good. That's not what the Holy Spirit's ministry is or ever was, but his first ministry is to convict the world and us individually of our sin. So we need to understand that, and he's the spirit of truth. Okay, so now we know the battle. The devil wants me to be in my sin and continue in my sin, never be set free. Jesus Christ died on the cross so that I'd be set free from the power of all sin, Romans 6, 14 through 16, over me. There's such a contrast. One is a ministry of sanctification through the Holy Spirit, and I'm set free. The other is I go out, I seek teachers to tickle my ears, or even diversions like the end of the world and all this stuff and all these catastrophes. And I focus on everything going on in the world, and I don't focus on Jesus Christ. And I don't focus on the ministry of the Holy Spirit transforming me as I read the word. I limit that. The devil wants me to remain in my sin. Let's just make that really clear. Period. So that we can die in our sin and perhaps even go to hell. Now, let's look at the difference. Let's start with the truth. What does the truth do? The truth, that piercing sword. Come on, not just tickling my ears and feeling good. That piercing sword that comes inside of me, the word of God, Hebrews 4.12. What does it do? John 8.31. This is so awesome, this truth. And if we read this truth, boy, we cannot stop until it is true in our lives. That's another thing. We're, these are not words just to read. These are words to be living and act alive in me. I am free. This is very clear. Alive in me, I am free. I am set free. Sin has no power of dominion over me. And then the word says in 1 John chapter 5, if I keep myself, the evil one cannot touch me. If I keep myself in that freedom. So I need to guard my salvation. I need to work it out with fear and trembling. I need to have on my armor and guard it. I need to get my freedom right? Through my faith in Jesus Christ, I need to do what the word says, be set free, and then I need to guard that freedom. Because those who are led by the Spirit destroy the works of their flesh, right? Romans 8, 14. 8, 13, 8, 14, through, write, write those scriptures. Those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God, and those who are allow the Spirit are set free from the dominion of sin. This is really clear. So this ministry I'll read it to you. If you live according, Romans 8, 13, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. That means if I keep having my ears tickled. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And why do you think the scriptures say where the Spirit of the Lord is, in other words, living and active, there is freedom, liberty. And that's talking about I'm washed clean of my sins and sin has no dominion over me. All right. John 8, 31. This is so awesome. Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, talking to believers here, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. So that means we read his word, we abide in it. And we live in it so that it's living and active by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The word is not made active other than through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see that in a moment. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right here, we have an immediate, positive, unbelievable truth of God's grace in the finished work of the cross. If we know the truth, and it's living and active in me, I will be set free. Huh, no guilt and shame from my sin. I'm securing my salvation through the witness of the Holy Spirit, and sin has no dominion over me. And then as I guard that with my armor every day, for the rest of the days of my life, even the evil one cannot touch me. All right. Huge. Now, John 1, 17. Really important we know this. For the law was given through Moses. And we know that's called in the New Testament the ministry of condemnation. But now let's contrast that. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So grace and truth are only in Jesus Christ. That's why we put our faith in him in the finished work of the cross. 
That's why we believe on that third day he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the resurrection. He was raised up, and we believe that he ascended into heaven. We know he did his ministry for 40 days on this earth, preached the gospel of the kingdom. Then he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he's the Son of God. So we have the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit who is in, within us as believers. This is what we believe. So, truth comes through Jesus Christ. That's why he is the way, the truth, and the life, everlasting life. No one comes to the Father but through faith in him. No other way. There are many other ways taught today. Many other churches have even added other ways, but no. There is no universalism when it comes to this. There's only one truth, and that is it. All right. Romans 6.22. Hmm. <clears throat> wow, these truths are just awesome. Um, but now, having been set free from sin. Ah. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Ah. And it just talked about the finished work of the cross that as we die to ourselves and are crucified on the cross with Jesus Christ, we reckon ourselves dead to sin and now slaves to righteousness. And it says, but now having been set free from sin, just explain how that was done through the cross of Jesus Christ, and then how we're raised up in a new birth through the power of the baptism of the Spirit, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness, and in the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The way, the truth, and the life. Yes, Marisol. I had a vision about that. Uh huh. I had a dream first where the Lord took me to heaven, and I mm -hmm. saw Mount Zion. But then, and, and he showed me the narrow way that leads to salvation. Right. But then I was in church, and the Lord gave me a vision to expand my dream. Mm -hmm. Mount Sinai was there. I was leaned down, which meant humble. I was holding on to the Lord, abiding in him. But then he showed me the, the road. And the road had all kinds of scriptures. Dying to yourself, crucify yourself. All those scriptures were on the, on the floor, on the blocks, and I was mm -hmm. walking on them. Yeah. And then I looked up and as I looked up, which means as I looked to the Lord for his guidance, there was all these stars that were floating like in this cylinder kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it had all the fruits of the Spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. the fruits of the Spirit right there. Mm -hmm. And it was like walking in the Word of God, the truth. Yeah. And with all the fruits of the Spirit being manifested, holding on to God in this narrow path that led to salvation. Yeah. It was amazing. And I, when you were talking about this, mm -hmm. the Lord said, this is, is what I was showing you, Marisol. Yeah. This is what I was showing you, that my truth will guard you and keep you. In your salvation. In your salvation. That's right. It, the, the Word of God is living and active all the days of our life. Not just I read it once and I know it, because <laughs> we know, we all know it's like peeling an onion, it layer the, after layer of truth comes out bricks, as we're ready for it. The bricks were alive. Amen. They were like, poof. So was the word of God. Poof. They were like hearts beeping, but like in the shape of a brick. Yeah. And I just want to do a pr quick yeah. prayer. Father, I repent of any time I read your word and I don't want it to be living and active, I just want to tickle my ears. Oh, Lord God, don't let me ever do that. Guard me from that in the name of Jesus. And I ask you always, Holy Spirit, teach me your truth. No matter how piercing it is, no matter how much I need to repent, be refined, change, be disciplined, whatever I need to do to be pleasing to you, Lord God, and get into your perfect will and be sanctified, I surrender to that, to the power of your word. And yes. I ask you to always make it living and active and lead me to the truth, Lord. If there's an area in my life that is not pleasing to you, lead yes. me to that truth, Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit, find it, bring it alive and living and active in me, and then sanctify me through and through. And I choose to be freed, and I break covenant with that sin in my life, all the days of my life, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, then fill me with the fruit of the Holy yes. Spirit, 
so that I will abide and live and walk and breathe and follow you all the days of my life. And flesh you are hereby crucified, I bind you and forbid you from rising up against obedience to God in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. You read, you didn't even know the next scripture I'm going to do, but it feeds right into what you just said of your vision. James 1, 22. Actually, 21. Great scripture. This is a secret to what she was just saying. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. That's the part of Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8, right? And receive, here's what she was saying. Remember what she said with humility. Receive with humility or meekness the implanted <gasps> word. Wow. Which is able to save your souls and become doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. Wow. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the gospel, the whole word, which is all used for edification, correction, and continues in it. So look, we're looking deeply into it. Not just looking, glancing at ourselves in a mirror. And continues in it. And is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Mm. There's, oh my goodness. So the truth must be implanted in me. And I must humbly receive it. That means, guess what, all of us? All of us. We've got to get rid of that pride of trying to appear perfect. Oh, my Lord, it is so easy in my flesh to think and to know that I'm perfect. I don't need to change. Oh, my goodness. And I want to appear that way to everyone else. Not a problem in the world. Everything's wonderful in my life. La, la, la. No. You know what? By the truth, we're set free. That means also our truth in how we speak to the Lord and our truth in how we receive the implanted word to be living and active, not to tickle my ears and make me feel good about myself. If I want just sermons to tickle my ears, oh my Lord, how am I ever going to become like Jesus Christ if every sermon tells me I'm wonderful and I'm doing good? How, how am I ever going to be transformed to be like Christ? I, I, I'm not. Because of my own flesh, I can't do it. So I have to submit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit to transform me and sanctify me through and through. Set me free by the power of the resurrection from all sin in my life. All right. And the, again, the sword of the Spirit, or the, the tool, that the active weapon, even the Holy Spirit is using, the two-edged sword, be able to pierce the division of my soul and spirit, is the Word of God. That's why it's living and active. That's why the Holy Spirit uses it to convict me of my sin, bring me to true godly sorrow and repentance, and to bring me to freedom of those chains, that prison I am living in perhaps from my past. Perhaps I haven't forgiven someone. Perhaps I have issues where I have family members that I'm separated from and I, I'm angry at them and I can't forgive them. Whatever it is, I can tickle my ears all day long and say I have a right to be angry at that person. Oh, God, believe me. We've all been there. Or I can receive with meekness, humility, the implanted word where the Spirit tells me, Dex, if you don't forgive others of their sin, neither will my Father in heaven forgive you, Dex. And all of a sudden, with fear and trembling, I realize I must forgive everyone who's hurt me. I must bless them and love them. Who I considered an enemy or I hated in the past, I must now love. This is the command of the Word of God. That's why the Word of God is living and active. It will transform me, and I will do things the world says are impossible, like love those who hate me and forgive them. Absolutely. I will do those things that are impossible. Or I can follow the ways of the world, have my ears tickled, and keep my anger, keep my bitterness, keep my sin. And the only one who wins is the devil, the destroyer of my soul. Because those who continue in their flesh will die. 
Now, hopefully we, we understand that. So, Ephesians 4.25 It, it, so now, the Lord is actually speaking to us. He says, so I individually, first and foremost, this is always about me. And I always say this, Marisol knows this. We have to read the word for myself first, always. And I must become a doer of the word before I can ever, in my humble opinion, share that word with another person. I must become a doer of it. How am I going to teach something I'm not living? So this says, so now let's assume for a second that now I'm living this, and let's see what the word is going to say about how this living water then comes out of me into others through the truth. Listen. Therefore, putting away lying, let's stop flattering each other and tickling each other's ears. My goodness, I don't know how many prophecies I hear that. Oh, I see you in front of large stadiums with 100,000 people preaching the word like Billy Graham. La, la. And you know what? And I know I shared this once, but we had a poor a widow who's a friend of ours that we lovingly ministered with, and her husband died. And there were prophets who prophesied these amazing things he was going to do. And she questioned, why, why did God hate me so much when all these prophets said, my husband was going to do these things, and now he's dead. He never did them. And then when you hear what was spoken, it was I'm sorry, but it was tickling of the ears. How great we are. How anointed we are. How, how many words, seriously, do we ever get of how we need to be holy? Think of how many words we get that we need to be holy. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. How many words do we get like that? So let's listen to this now in that context. Therefore, putting away lying, and I will say, Tickling of ears with the next scripture in a second. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. It'd be really cool if as a body of Christ, we don't play this game and we actually speak the truth to each other in love. And if we can't do it in love, I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -mm. Not a word out of my mouth if I'm not ready to speak something as anointed by the Holy Spirit, as a led by the Holy Spirit, in love. I am not to speak to another. That's what 1 Corinthians 13 is about. I could prophesy, I could heal, I could do miracles, but if I don't do it in love, it's worth nothing. And love covers a multitude of sin. Love releases the power of God. Huh, I'm not going to do it without love. Now, James 5.20. Let's let this hit home now. Now we'll talk about tickling of the ears, the scriptures on that, which are prevalent for the end times, which we believe we're in. How the Lord warns us about tickling of ears. All right. James 5.20. Wow. Verse 19. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the, from the truth, yeah, from the truth. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So that grace doctrine that we've heard many actually even speak to us that says, oh, just, we're just meant to love each other even in our sin. Just let, it, let the person keep committing adultery. You're his best friend. We're just to love him. Hmm. Let's listen to this. Brethren, anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back and you don't turn him back by tickling his ears and patting him on the back, just acting like everything's okay. A good friend confidentially speaks in truth as led by the Spirit to his friend about a sin. I don't care if it's adultery, fornication, homosexuality. I don't care which one of the 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 sins it is, or Galatians 5, 18 through 22, the fruits of the Spirit versus the flesh, all those. I don't care which one it is. I am to speak to my brother or sister in the truth. And the truth is not my truth or what someone fantasizes. It's according to this truth. It says, let him know that he who turns the sinner from the error of his way. Oh, well, that would mean I tell him the truth. Mm. Will save a soul from death. That means destruction, eternal death. And cover a multitude of sins. That means I could actually, their soul could be saved. 
because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth speaking words of life into that person, which is the truth. Not the tickling of the ears. You did wonderful, blah. Oh, you're so anointed. Oh, blah, blah. No, the truth. All right. 1 Peter 1.22. One last scripture here on this. And then we're going to go to the tickling scripture. Oh, Lord have mercy. Ah, oh, here it is. Again, back to myself. Always me. Since you, me, you, have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. I'm just going to read that again. Since I, I and you have purified my souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. There it is. Now, what's the fruit afterwards? Now, if I've done that, and here it is, because now I have a pure heart, a clean heart, renewing me a clean heart, O oh God, and re I mean, <laughs> creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now I can be used as a vessel to bless each other. Others, listen. In sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Wow. There it is. Abide in the word. Let the word abide in you. And that same word, when it's living and active, will set me free. I'm purified. I surrender to the ministry and sanctification of the Holy Spirit. I surrender to God to be sanctified through and through in the name of Jesus. So I have a pure heart and a pure soul. Oh, you're not getting this. A pure heart and a pure soul. No soul ties from before I got married. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I've been washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. And I've dealt with all that. I've repented. And now I am walking as led by the Holy Spirit. Through the completion of my sanctification. And then through the living waters pouring out. So I can love my brothers with a pure heart and a pure soul. And how's that done? Through the word of God, which live and abides forever. And it starts out living and active in me. All the days of my life, Father, make the word of God living and active in me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I surrender that ministry, Holy Spirit, every day of my life in Jesus' name. All right. Wow, I want to go to um, 1 Corinthians 2.13. I want to... Stick to the Holy Spirit part. Again, I just want to stay on this theme for a moment. First Corinthians? 2.13. To make sure we get this. And then we'll know how to recognize the tickling of the ears and, in my view, how to flee from that. I'm not interested in my ears being tickled. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Ah. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. He's not going to receive it in my flesh. If I'm looking for tickling of the ears, I'm not actually honoring, but I'm grieving the Holy Spirit ministry within me. I'm quenching it. I think it's time we stop doing that. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, that he himself is rightly judged by no one. Wow. How does this work, Marisol? John 14, 26. But the helper, Jesus speaking, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things. Ah, there it is again. And bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So if I'm filled by the Spirit, I'm sanctified by the Spirit. I have the honor of God on, which remember even includes the word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit as part of my armor. Right? That's part of the armor. So I'm working 
as led by the Spirit, walking in step with the Spirit. Even in prayer, I'm using the Word of God as a sword of the Spirit in my brothers and sisters and in those who are not saved. It is living and active in me and in an unbeliever to bring them to salvation. That's why the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's not you or I, Marisol. It's the gospel, the word of God. is the power of God unto salvation. That's why we can have such confidence in going out boldly and proclaiming the word to those who are not saved. And then let the Holy Spirit ministry work in that beautiful future brother or sister. Convict them of their sin Show them their need for a Savior, and then show them Jesus Christ, what he did for them. And the love of God that so loved the world, that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. That if you put your faith and trust in him, you will have everlasting life. Then that gospel has power, because it's done in love. And it's done with a pure heart and a pure soul. Do you... Do you Hopefully we get this. We are incredible vessels for God when we have a pure heart and a pure soul and we've been sanctified and set free from sin. We're incredibly powerful vessels to the, which the fullness of the Holy Spirit can flow. So let's make sure that's the truth. Not what the devil wants for me to continue in my sin. All right. 2 Timothy 4.3, that other foundational scripture I've been putting off. Let's see what the Lord says about the end times, what we are to be warned about, 2 Timothy 4.3. Huh. Huh. I'm going to read verse 2. Paul is charging Timothy, who's a minister of the word. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, our flesh. What our flesh always wants for me to appear perfect, because then I, if, if not, I'm disqualified for ministry, aren't I? Because they have itching ears, that means I want to hear what sounds wonderful, no need to repent or change. They will heap up for themselves teachers, and here it is, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. Those scriptures that convict us of our sin. Hide from them. Run from them. In fact, here's what the devil tells us. Oh my goodness, the Supreme Court, whatever. The world says these are no longer sin. They're no longer sin. Hollywood, by the movies they portray, say these things are all acceptable. Adultery, fornication, homosexual, it doesn't matter. They all say it's acceptable, therefore, well, then God must have changed his mind, huh? Hmm. It's amazing how God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all people, will, including myself, will be judged by the word of God. And it's amazing how 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 shows us what happens when we surrender the ministry of the Holy Spirit versus we reject it. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? So I can continue my sin. That's what the devil's telling me. Do not be deceived. Poof. How about a bomb of the truth which will set us free? Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And here's the other bomb on the good side. And such were, past tense, some of you, no longer freed from the dominion of sin in every one of those areas. And I was on that list as a prodigal son. But you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of of our God. So do I want the truth to set me free or do I want to continue in my sin? It's a choice. <clears throat> Let's go to huh, John three nineteen. It's 
So we just heard the gospel, God so loved the world in John 3.16. <clears throat> and then we hear about why we're condemned. And remember, the Word of God says that Jesus Christ is a judge, and he will use the Word of God to judge all of us. He, he must judge by the Word. So if we're on a list that says, I will not inherit the kingdom of God, I will not inherit it. There is no if, and, ands, or but. It doesn't matter what the world says. The days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the words, world, those cities said that those were not sins, I guarantee you. And this is the condemnation that the light, the light, Jesus Christ, has come into the world. The light, the way, the truth, the light. The only way to salvation. He came into the world. This is the truth. And this is the condemnation. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And everyone practicing, remember that's when we go to hell, when we practice these sins and continue practicing them. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deed should be exposed. Hmm. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. So if I love my sin, and the devil will give me every reason to love my sin and continue in it, this is the condemnation. I'm listening to the liar. The father of lies, in fact. He's so good at it. But if now I listen to the word of truth, which says, by he who the Son says free is free indeed, and I run in my faith to Jesus Christ, I go to the cross, I crucify myself, I surrender the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to set me free from the power of sin in my flesh, surrender my life to the Lord, to be Lord and Savior of my life, then that active ministry will set me free. So Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, that the prisoners are set free, my chains are loosed, all that stuff will happen through the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. As I repent, the bands are broken off of me. You remember what Mary Kay Baxter said when the Lord opened up her eyes. Remember that man that came into a salvation? He was a drunkard. He came into a little church to be saved. And Mary Kay Baxter gave the testimony how the Lord opened her eyes and she saw that as that drunkard confessed each sin, the bands of sin were broken off. He was freed. And then at the end, remember, they gave him a new heart. They took out his heart of stone and gave him a heart of flesh. This was the act of repentance and putting your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because he who the Son sets free, it's not just some wash clean of my sins, which is amazingly important, but I'm set free from the power of sin by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you something really simple. Why would Jesus Christ go to the cross, shed his blood, I put my faith in him and leave me in my sin? Why would God do that? When he said, without holiness, well, no one will see the Lord. Why would he do He did not do that. It's not what the word says. It's never been what the word says. He does not leave me in my sin. In fact, the word warns over and over again that if I continue in my sin, after coming to the knowledge of the truth, read Hebrews 10.26, I will actually experience the wrath of God in the end in a way that is horrible. Believe me, that's not going to heaven. I'm going to read that to you. I'm sorry. Hmm. This is so important that the truth will set us free. Father, I ask you to use the truth and your love to set us free. Convict us, Father. We cast away those lies of the devil. For if we sin willfully after, willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth. So I, I know now that these things are sin. And if I continue practicing them, I'm going to hell. I, I know that. I read the word. I know it. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. And yes, this is the, this is the New Testament. Yeah. These are not tickling of the ear scriptures. Or how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy? And here's what happens. So we actually see the truth now. Who has trampled 
the Son of God underfoot when I continue in my sin. I take lightly that sacrifice of the cross. Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Holy Spirit of grace. That's an insult to grace to continue in my sin. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Lord, I ask that you release the Holy Spirit fully in us, including the spirit of fear, one of the seven spirits in Isaiah 11. And then we will all the days of our life work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Let these truths be engrafted onto our minds and our hearts so that we may not sin against you. And your word says that in the name of Jesus. When we have the fear of the Lord, it's so that we may not sin against you, Lord. Always remind us, we ask of our own free will, of these truths, Lord. And so when those lies of the devil and those temptations come, Lord, guard us and keep us in your holiness. Teach us to flee the lusts of the flesh. Teach us to have our armor on every day. Teach us as those fiery darts and lies and deceits come and temptations come. Activate the sermon in us, Father, in the fear of the Lord. And keep us from the evil one all the days of our life. Deliver us from all evil, Father, all the days of our life in the name of Jesus through the full ministry of the Holy Spirit. Whatever you need to do to keep us to be holy we, and to form us in your holiness, we ask you to do it, Father, in the name of Jesus, without reservation, every area of my life, Lord. Hallelujah and amen. I can't wait to see what you do, Lord, and how you guard and keep us in this salvation. We need you, Lord. We can't do this on our own. We can't do it without you, you Holy Spirit. We just honor you, Holy Spirit, and ask you to always fill us and lead us. Teach us to hear your voice and always follow you in Jesus' name. You know, we can't do this on our own. So I, I, get, I get upset. This is by the power of God that we're set free. This is by the resurrection power. This is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we're set free. These are supernatural things, but we must surrender and pursue them. Read Romans 6. We, there's actually things we need to do to be crucified with Christ on the cross. So that sin shall have no power or dominion over me. Read those and do them. Even as I did. And you will be set free because the word says you will. And it's the word. Jesus didn't die on the cross again for us to continue in our sin, but to be set free. And he paid a very high price on the cross and by his blood. All right. So, tickling every year, 2 Timothy 3. Let's go back to Timothy because this is where he talks a lot about the end times. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters proud, again, lifting up ourselves and not Jesus. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders about others, gossiping, slandering, putting them down, without self-control against the power of sin, brutal, despisers of good, accepting what the world says is good, not what God does. That's a despiser of good. Traitors, headstrong, my way, is what I'm going to do. Saul was headstrong and he lost the Holy Spirit, was tormented by a demon and died. The first king of Israel. Headstrong. I, that's too hard, Lord. I will do part of what you asked me to do, but the rest I'll do my way. Headstrong. That's what Saul did. Haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Hmm, there it is. Let's continue in our sin. Lust of the flesh. Having a form of godliness, in other words, appearing godly in church and everything and to others, but denying its power, the power of the Holy Spirit. No 
proof of the power of God, the power of the resurrection, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the fruit and the gifts flowing through me. And from such people, turn or run away. Verse 7, it says that they're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Whoa. So we always hear all those sermons, and we go, oh, that's such a good sermon. Oh, yeah, I'll try to do better. Mm. But never coming to the experiential, living and active knowledge of being a doer of that word. There's no, no other difference. There's either we're a doer of the word or we're not. There's not a gray zone in between. Saul tried the gray zone. Part obeyed God and part didn't. And then he took the Holy Spirit from him, and we know the rest of the story. He died. And he was tormented by a demon. All right. John 8, 45. In Jesus' day, this is when Jesus walked the earth. And we think, oh, well, that's not going to happen to me today. Well, you know, we can't see Jesus today. He's not walking there. John 8, 45. Well, let's start with verse 44. That way we can discern the actions of the devil. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. We're to stand and stand firm. That's what the armor is about when the devil lies to us. We're to stand firm, not in what the world tells us, but what the Word of God and the Holy Spirit teaches us is the truth. That's a living and active and abiding in me. That truth is to abide in me, and I'm, therefore I become a doer of it. It says, when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. He creates lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's word, and we know then we become a doer of it. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. The word of God is to be living and active in me. It's not an intellectual scripture. It's the truth that's able to set me free. It says, if my word abides in you, and you abide in my word, by my truth you'll be set free. This is the gospel truth for all of us. For our salvation, for our sanctification, for our complete surrender of our lives to Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of our lives, so that we will deny ourselves, yeah, deny ourselves, deny what I thought was right, take up my cross, believe this truth and follow him in it as led by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Luke 6, 26. Let's see a little contrast here. Woe to you, and this is part of how I actually can discern sometimes what's going on in other people and their words or what they're saying. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Hmm. But I say to you who hear, there it is again, he who has an ear to hear the same in the letters to the seven churches in Revelation, the Lord's always saying, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. Hmm. To him who strikes you in the cheek, turn the other. To take your cloak, give it to him. Bless him. And if you only do good to those who love you, you're the same as the sinners of the world. We need to love the entire world Amen. and be a light to that entire world. 
Okay, how much time do we have? Sir? Ten minutes. Perfect, okay. First Corinthians verse 2. I want us to be challenged here. And believe me, this is challenging to me too. Uh, believe me. First Corinthians 2, 1 Corinthians 2.1. Oh, what a challenge in these words. Paul saying, and the Spirit's on me, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to the testimony of God. It's not in man's wisdom. Do not look for tickling your ears in man's wisdom, please. Someone reinterpreting the word or having revelations no one else has, please. For I determine not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Well, there's a central theme. If the preaching and the testimonies always give glory to Jesus Christ, right there, that's a marker of a man of humility who I will listen to their word. Because it will be based off of humility and God gives grace to the humble. That means that grace will be flowing through them into me. Do you know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified? I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. So it was not, he was not a charismatic man. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. He's casting aside all these charismatic, if I'm charismatic, and please, if you're ever on a committee of choosing a pastor for your church, don't pick the charismatic one, please. Pick the humble one who knows on their knees how to pray. But in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, here's the challenge. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Wow, what a challenge. Part of the truth is that, and Mark 16 says this, as we go out and proclaim the gospel, Jesus goes along with us and confirms the preaching of the gospel of signs, miracles, and wonders. If we go outside the, those doors of the church, into the world, and we bring the gospel, we bring the truth, captives will be set free, living water will flow out of us. And you all know what I'm talking about. In fact, I generally find the greatest anointings we find is when we're just out in the street or out at the store or something and we pray for someone. And the spirit falls and all of a sudden, poof. It's not in the wisdom of men. I don't want my ears tickled with feel-good sermons. I want the truth to set me free and keep me free. And then I want the truth to put me on fire for God all the days of my life. I want the truth to guard me and keep me in that salvation. I want the truth to always have my eyes open to the ways of the devil. I want that truth to release the fullness of the Holy Spirit ministry in me. I want the truth to teach me to honor the Holy Spirit so that I'm always led by him. I want the truth to teach me to die to myself so I don't think I need figured it out or I know it anymore, that I'm humble all the days of my life, to receive the implanted word as God wants to elevate us in due season. For he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. I want truth to humble me so that all that pride that was in me is crushed in the name of Jesus Christ. I want truth to discipline me anytime I need it so that I am sanctified by the living power of God to be like Jesus Christ. I want to be able to go to the Lord at the end and say, I learned to love Jesus as you loved. Even those who didn't love you that you went to the cross for. For you died for sinners, not for the righteous. I want these truths to live and abide in me all the days of my life. I want the hunger of God to always grow in me, Father, all the days of my life, never to diminish. Let it be a burning fire inside of me, like it was in Jeremiah. All the days of my life, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, <clears throat> Jeremiah 6.16. Three minutes. Amen. And then we'll pray. I love this. This is, this is a call to us. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see. Ask for the old past, not what the world says today, but what God says and has always said. 
Ask for the old past, which we do, Lord, where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it, and it's our pride. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet, but they said, we will not listen. <clears throat> the Lord says, we're to stand in the ways and know the ways of God and ask for the, what the good ways are, where the ancient paths are that are pleasing to you. And we do, Lord, we ask for the ways that are pleasing to you because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and your word abides forever. Therefore, we ask for that truth to always pierce our souls and spirits, Lord, yes. in Jesus' name. Now let's pray. I have a couple of awesome scriptures. Psalm 141. We're talking about the word of God being living and active in us, and there's nothing more important than we counter that pride that is inside of us to release the truth inside of us. This is one of my favorite scriptures to do this. Lord, I pray this. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with other men who work iniquity. And do not let me ever eat of their delicacies or of the devil's lies, Father, in Jesus' name. Let the righteous, my brother or sister, strike me. It shall be a kindness. And let him rebuke me. It shall be as excellent oil. Let my head never refuse even the discipline you bring through my brothers and sisters as you promised to David you would do over his son Saul. I mean Solomon. For still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked, Lord. Let me never participate in them in the name of Jesus. And let me always humbly reserve the implanted word, even if it is from a brother and sister. And Father, I don't want tickling in ears. I, right now I shut the door. I close the door to that, to my mind, my heart, my soul, my spirit, ever receiving those. Cut them off from my life, Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask that you bring people with true words in season that are meant for me, that you want to speak to me. And let them be received as deep into my heart as a living and active word, Lord. All other words I crucify and I cast aside as far as the east is from the west from me. Always, and I help, ask you to help me discern the truth between the two, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Psalm 25, another great prayer. Verse 4. We're almost done. These are important prayers. And by the way, these prayers always transform my life because I'm we're praying the perfect will of God, which means he will answer these. Show me your ways, O Lord, and always teach me your paths. Lead me into your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day, all the days of my life. I ask you to teach me only your truth, Lord, in Jesus' name. And last one, Psalm 86, 11. Mm, these are great, great prayers. Psalm 86, 11. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. I will walk in your truth and help me to do that always, Holy Spirit. Unite my heart to fear your name, so I will praise you with all my heart all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we surrender right now to your ministry all the days of our life of what we've spoken about today in these prayers. We ask you to make these prayers, not one word full, void to the ground, but perform these prayers in us. We surrender to it completely all the days of our life to bring fruit and glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. This has been your program, Jeremiah 29, 11, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Amen. Amen.